G'day and welcome back to the Your Wellness Nerd channel. My name's Grant, I'm a physiotherapist, and in today's video, I wanna talk you through some quick tests that you can do if you've sprained your ankle to hopefully rule out an ankle fracture. So the guidelines that we're gonna follow are what's called the Ottawa Ankle Rules, or the Ottawa Ankle Rules. And what these guidelines are, are a set of five very simple tests that you can do on yourself or have someone do to you to essentially tell you if you do not have an ankle fracture. So there was a recent systematic review which took 15 studies on the Ottawa Ankle Rules that totaled about eight and a half thousand people. And what they found was that the Ottawa ankle rules were at least 90% effective at ruling out an ankle fracture or a foot fracture. So it goes without saying, if you've just sprained your ankle and you wanna try and understand whether you need to rush up and get an x-ray or not, then you can do this set of tests to understand that in a really short amount of time. What's also really important to quickly touch on with these tests is they don't guarantee that you've broken something if they are positive. They're just really good at ruling out the presence of something which can be a vital piece of information for anyone that's unsure of whether to go and get a scan in the moment or not. So with these five assessments, the first one essentially looks at the lateral malleolus of the ankle. And all the lateral malleolus is, is just the bony bit on the outside of the ankle. What it suggests is if you have some bony tenderness, so not soft tissue tenderness, but bony tenderness at the tip, the bottom tip of that, or for the six centimeters behind that as you come up the side of the leg along the bone, if that is tender to touch, that may suggest that there's some bony damage to that area and may warrant a scan of some sort like an x-ray. However, if you're pressing through the tip of that lateral malleolus and coming up for six centimeters on the side of that and it isn't tender, you can be relatively confident that it isn't broken. And it's important to remember that you can be tender below those areas where the ligaments might be, but if you're coming up onto the bone and it isn't tender, that's a fantastic sign that you haven't broken that bone. The second one, also on the outside of the foot, is we wanna try and find what's called the base of the fifth metatarsal. And what your metatarsal bones are, are the long bones in your foot, just before you get to your toes. But if you travel around the outside of your foot, about halfway down the foot, you'll feel a bony bump that almost hooks into that area. And if you have some bony tenderness in this area as well, if it genuinely hurts, we can't promise that you haven't broken or avulsed some of the bone off in that area. But again, if it doesn't, feel tender, if it's not sore on the bone, we can be relatively confident that you haven't broken that area. And then with the third area, we can flip around to the inside of the foot. And what we can see is uh, we're looking for the medial malleolus. So this time the bump on the inside of your ankle bone at the tip of that bone, or again, six centimeters as you come up on the inside of that bone. If it is tender, same deal. You might be dealing with a fracture. If it's not tender, you can be relatively confident that it isn't broken. And then with the fourth area, we want to try and find the navicular bone. Now, a lot of people are well aware of navicular bone fractures. And to find that navicular bone, it's essentially about a thumb's width, not below, but below and in front of that medial malleolus. And you'll feel there's a bony bump there that's quite prominent for a lot of people. If you can palpate that or feel through that bone and you don't feel some really nasty tenderness there, again, you probably haven't damaged that bone. And the final of the five tests that we can use as part of the Ottawa Ankle Rules is whether you can take four steps on that ankle immediately after injury or in the emergency department or when you're being assessed. If you can't take four steps on that ankle or on that foot, we can't guarantee that you don't have a bony dysfunction there. So it would then require you to potentially get an x-ray just to rule that out. But as I said, it's really important with these Ottawa ankle rules is that if you have some tenderness there, it doesn't guarantee that it's broken, but it does mean that it does warrant further investigation with an x-ray. All these tests can do is rule out the presence of a fracture. It doesn't rule in the presence of a fracture. That's essentially for an x-ray or something else that might require a trip to the emergency department. So those Ottawa ankle rules are really nice because they can definitely decrease some of the stress involved with spraining your ankle. Sometimes it's really hard to know, especially if your ankle really, really hurts, to know whether you've actually broken something or just overstretched and torn those ligaments. But it wouldn't be a Your Wellness Nerd video if I didn't also finish with a really important tip in regards to a specific musculoskeletal dysfunction. A lot of people don't realize that if you have an ankle sprain, you are far more likely to re-injure that ankle again down the track if you don't thoroughly rehab that dysfunction. And one of the main traps that we tend to fall into if we sprain our ankle is that once the pain goes away after a week or two, we automatically feel like things are back to normal. But what ultimately 
typically happens is even though the pain has decreased, our brain's feeling less threatened about that dysfunction, it doesn't guarantee that you've reclaimed your full ankle range of motion, your full ankle strength, balance and the function of that area, which are the main things that will decrease the risk of it coming back again. As a quick little hack, one of the things that I find really important with ankle sprains is that we get this understanding that because we've sprained the ligament, that the ligament is looser and that we need to really try and strengthen that ankle, which is important. But what also happens with a lot of ankle sprains, if there is some instability there, what the ankle can do is the soft tissue in the ankle joint can get stiffer and tighter to try and make up for some of that more muscular or soft tissue instability. So once it becomes more stable again and things heal, often we're left with some of that stiffness, especially if we're in a boot or a plaster cast for a period of time. And what I find clinically is one of the main reasons why people re-injure their ankle again isn't just because the ankle's a little bit weaker or a little bit more unstable, but because the ankle is stiffer. So it's really important you try and work on that ankle stiffness to give your ankle more mobility and more motion to play with so that if you re-roll that ankle again, the ankle and the leg can go with that movement more than just sort of butting into the end of some stiffness and having to bust through those ankle ligaments again. Once you're back to where you need to be, make sure that you feel like your muscular strength, your muscular control, your balance, your ankle joint mobility, and the function of that leg has returned and you're not just basing the success of your recovery on a lack of pain. So that being said, I hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments down below if you've had to use the Ottawa Ankle Rules. Slap a like in the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hope to see you in the next one. See you later.